So, uh, this morning, we had somebody, as a familiar face, has been here before, but uh, I know she's gone through some of the programs here as well. Uh, uh, Kim's going to tell us a little bit about her venture, um, her journey, I guess, and then how that turned into entrepreneurship. So, Kim, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate the introduction. Um, how many of you either personally have had the experience of a life-changing ca life catastrophic event or know somebody personally who has had some kind of an event, right? Most of us do. It's a pretty new <coughs> event. In 2001, I was literally dragged kicking and screaming into what has become the best life that I have ever known. And my name is Kim Rayner, and I have created a company called All About Spirit. I show people how to apply the universal laws of spirit in their life so they can find a way to release the past after their catastrophic event, embrace what their new normal is going to be, and then they can thrive in whatever life looks like today. And before I start my presentation, I really want to take a second to thank the Kauffman Foundation and Mark Burwell and Amy Peach at Fox Valley Technical College for everything that they have done to help get me to where I am. Also, the DVR and SCORE have played really big parts in, in getting me here, so you know, thank you for your efforts. And I'm gonna, um, in, my, in my presentation today, I'm really gonna share some spiritual wake-up calls with you. I'm gonna earn the right to talk to you as a business owner for All About Spirit and bridging a gap that exists between services that are available and what patients really need when they go through catastrophic health events. And then I'll share a chronological timeline of what's gone on in my business from 2014 to 2017. And then I'll quickly share some of my services and programs just to um, give you some insight into it for the comments and questions section of the presentation. So in order to talk about the spiritual wake up calls, I'm gonna introduce you to this man. His name is Fred Moulter and he was my dad. And in 1994, he became a wheelchair dependent stroke survivor. That was a wake-up call for my family. It was an integration into a spiritual life that I did not know existed. And in 2001, he became a, um, an end-stage kidney failure patient. And at that time, I was a full-time general manager of a hotel. I was a single mom, and I was going to become his full-time caregiver. And I knew that I couldn't stay in my job and take care of my son and take care of my dad. Something had to give, so I made the decision to quit my career. And that was a spiritual event. I, that was part of the literally being dragged, kicking and screaming into my life. Um, I loved my dad and I wanted to do that, but I had a little bit of fear around how am I gonna survive. So things went along really well for about three years. And then on March 10th, my dad was on his way to dialysis and he was being transported in a medical transport vehicle. The driver went into a diabetic coma and rolled the van on Highway 41 and killed the other passenger in the car, and my dad survived that accident. And that really began the beginning of the end of his life. After that accident, he made 22 trips to the hospital in an ambulance between March 10th of 2004 and February 4th of 2005. That last admission in the hospital put him in ICU for 13 days, and then he ended up in a regular room for three days, and he was discharged because there was, no, there was nothing medically more that they could do for him. And he was living in an assisted living facility at that time, so he was discharged. He went to dialysis that day, and then they brought him back to his facility. I, you know, I went with him there, and at five o'clock that night, he had a gastrointestinal bleed. And because the facility he was living in was a non-skilled facility, he could not stay in that facility while he was actively bleeding, so the facility called 911. They sent the ambulance, brought him back to the hospital, who said, well, we can't do anything with you. We just discharged you less than 10 hours ago. And so he couldn't go home, and he couldn't be admitted to the hospital, and there was really nothing for us to do with him. And he literally spent the next five and a half hours in the emergency room room while the medical staff was standing outside arguing about what to do with him. And at about 11 o'clock, I had a meltdown, and I went out into the, into the lobby, and I said, you know what, we can hear everything that you guys are saying. Do you realize that this is a person, and he's my dad? And why don't you bring the conversation at least into the room so we can participate in it? And they did end up admitting him that day, but that was really traumatic for him. Yeah, <laughs> bravo, right? They admitted him, but not without a fight. And he... Um, so he, that was a Saturday night. Sunday, he was in the hospital, he was in his room, and I, you know, I spent the day with him, but he was really subdued. 
And then Monday he was supposed to be dialyzed and he made the decision not to take dialysis that day. And if you know anything about kidney failure, if you are a dialysis patient and you refuse dialysis, you're signing the death certificate. And that is in fact what he did. He died 17 days later on March 8th. Um, he took his last breath and I was standing next to him holding his hand when he did that. That was a huge spiritual experience for me. I spent the last three years really active in his life and care and I had this huge void in my life after that. So I went back to work and I just could not plug in to work. I didn't want to do what I was doing. I was working in the banking industry at that time. I just wasn't connected. And I had done enough spiritual work that said, if you don't like where you are, then you need to change. You need to do something different. You're not a tree. You're not planted there. So I made the decision a second time to quit my job. And I enrolled at UW Fox Valley and then at UW Oshkosh in the College of Nursing. I wanted to become a nurse so I could help advocate for people like my dad who didn't have anybody to care for them. And I was, I loved school. I did really well in it. I enjoyed it. I was excited. I was looking forward to my career. I'm a pretty responsible person. I had a little bit of money saved up so it wasn't going to be too much of a financial hardship. And I took out catastrophic health insurance through the college, figuring I'd be able to take care of myself if something happened, but it's good to have the insurance. And then in June of 2007, the next catastrophe hit. I was diagnosed with stage 3C ovarian cancer. And my insurance was not, um, it didn't cover ovarian cancer the way I expected it to. It treated, um, it treated chemotherapy as if it was an outpatient treatment. There's a $1,000 lifetime aggregate limit for that. And I had 18 rounds of chemo at $6,000 a pop. I had three surgeries. I had, I mean, I lost my home. I lost my career. I lost my family. I lost my, I, I lost everything. I lost my life savings. And I lost my ability to continue working in the world that I, the way that I used to. And, you know, the good news is that I survived. But while I was doing that, that really didn't feel so much like good news. And I had this really mixed bag of what was going on inside me that was a spiritual awakening to think, I would rather be dead than be doing what I'm doing right now. So uh, that was a spiritual wake-up call. And out of those events, really, I earned the right to stand up here today as All About Spirit because I was a caregiver for my dad for 11 years. I understand what it means to be a caregiver. I also was a patient who lost everything, who went on this intense spiritual quest of my own and so I understand from the patient's perspective what it feels like. And I know from both perspectives the gap that exists between what the medical world offers us and what we as patients need. So I ended up on disability as a result of that, as a result of the long-standing effects of my chemo. And that's really not where I wanted to be. That's not where I want to be today, but it is the reality of my life today. So I'm going to share with you the chronological chronological order of how this actually became a business and it started in 2014. I had this idea in my head after living through these experiences, you know, I had a lot of residual effects from the chemo and from the surgeries and stuff and I just had this idea that there's got to be help available for people who are going through stuff like me and I thought well maybe I could help fill that gap. So I did a little research and I found out about the EC program and I came here and I took the EC program and I built the beginning of a business plan, started poking around in it and thinking, well, is this really a viable idea? And it, it turned out to be. So I also then took the business model showcase and design program. And Mark Burwell was actually my coach during that program. And I got more and more excited about it as I played with the business idea. And there was a competition that was coming up during Global Entrepreneurship Week. And it was on that business model showcase. So I entered the competition. I entered it as Kim Rayner, and I actually won the Community Impact Award for my idea. It wasn't a business yet, it was just an idea that was floating around in my head. So I made the decision after that in 2015 to register All About Spirit as a limited liability corporation in the state of Wisconsin. And I started to implement the business plan that I had been working on. And I knew that I needed to have some kind of credentials to be able to do the work that I wanted to do. So I started looking around for coaching schools. And I enrolled in a coaching school in October of 2015. And in 2016, in October, I graduated from that school and became a certified Law of Attraction Life Coach. And I chose Law of Attraction Life Coaching because that is really the spiritual component of all of the work I do. How is what I do today, what I think about, how does that 
how does that pave the way for what my life is gonna look like? And in 2016, I started coaching clients and I ran my first, um, I launched my first coaching program for people. And that really takes me to 2017 where I am today and I'm really at the beginning of, okay, let's get the momentum, let's get this moving. So I'm working with a marketing company on finalizing my branding. I am preparing to launch my second um, coaching, or my second group coaching program, which actually is going to take place a week from tomorrow, the start of it. And I'm working on the services and program structure for my business. And I'll share just a little bit about that with you so we can, um, and then I'll open the floor for the comments and questions. So the services that I offer are really private coaching, I do group coaching, and I do public speaking. And the programs that I offer, I have four of them right now. The first one is an, introdu an introduction to the seven universal laws of spirit. The second program is called Treatments Over What Now? And that's for people who have gone through their cancer treatment or through their catastrophic event, they're done with the active medical care, and now they're being pushed out of the crib into the world and saying, all right, where do I go from here? So that's a transitional program for them. The Clearing at the End of the Path program is for people who have been caregivers and they've taken care of somebody and that person is no longer with them. And now they're faced with the challenge of recreating their life. And then the last program, which is the one that starts next week, is called the Spirituality of Money. Because when you go through some kind of a catastrophic event, oftentimes it has a huge financial impact on you. And I needed to change my relationship with what I thought about money to be able to really get back on my feet. So that is my business in a nutshell, and I'm gonna open it up for comments and questions at this point. 